and welcome to the Grandland video blog for books that came out on September 2nd, 2009. As always, I'm Craig, your host. Uh, this is going to be a really short installment, I think, and there's only going to be one installment this week because there really isn't a lot to talk about. There's a, there's a lot of, not a lot of books that came out and definitely not a lot that piqued my interest. So uh, I've got a little stack here and I guess we're just going to go through them kind of as they come to me. Uh, first off, obviously Wednesday Comics is still hot. Uh, this is the second part of the two parts of the uh, Neil Gaiman, Mike Allred uh, periodic table of the elements as we tell the Metamorpho story. Um, Palmiati and Connor on Supergirl still good. Um, Kyle Baker's Hawkman is kind of taking a weird twist, but it's still fun. And um, oh yes, how could I forget The Flash? Uh, Kershaw and Fletcher's Flash is so good, especially this particular one. He's done; a, they've done a lot of really fun stuff with time travel up till now, and now they kind of do a funny little like uh, Saturday Sunday comic strip sort of thing going on with him. So very nice, good stuff. Definitely check that out. Uh, Batman 690, part three of the Judd Winnick story. Mark Bagley on art, very good. Uh, another very interesting chapter, um, and we kind of find out who the mystery person is. Uh, just a nice twist on a, on a good Batman story. And, and this Batman story could have been told with Bruce Wayne, but in, in addition to telling it with, you know, Dick Grayson, they kind of twist it a little bit and they put Dick Grayson in a situation where he has to really react to some stuff that, that I don't think Bruce Wayne really ever dealt with. So very interesting stuff. Um, Dick Grayson is really growing into the mantle at this point. Uh, you can you can feel that he's taken on that role you know there were, there were points where i was reading this and it wasn't just okay it's dick grayson in the cape and cowl hey look at that look at that what would he do differently than bruce but there is still a little bit of that obviously as there will be because it's batman reborn and you know you got to put a flag on it um luke cage noir pretty disappointing actually so we're just gonna set it there incognito number six definitely some good stuff um this wraps up really well and then we go back to criminal and as I've heard, Brubaker and Phillips will go back to selling a lot fewer copies. Buy Criminal, folks. Criminal is amazing. Incognito was good. If you liked Incognito, you'd love Criminal. They just don't have powers over in Criminal. It's exactly the same thing. Really good noir stuff. Incognito wrapped up really nicely. There were six issues instead of whatever he was planning, four or five. But still, if you didn't buy it, wait for the trade, because I'm sure that the first printing is already, or the first issue is in like third or fourth printing. The Mighty continues to be really fun. Um, bizarre things are going on, uh, and, and they're, not, they're not tipping their hand just yet. Tomasi's not just throwing it all on the table and going, all right, here we go. You know, he's playing it very close to his chest, and it's making it very interesting. You know, we get these kind of sinister looks from Alpha One, but then at the same time, we pull it back a little bit. And, you know, he looks like a good guy. And, and, and we, as the reader, don't know what to think, which is exactly why this book is intriguing. So please read this. Don't buy Irredeemable. Don't buy Life and Times of Savior 28. Buy The Mighty. Take all your other copies of Irredeemable in Life and Times of Savior 28 and go sell them, eBay or whatever. I know Irredeemable is going, like, through the roof on eBay or whatever. You know, people are constantly talking about how it sells out. I just got a press release that number six sold out in one day. It doesn't matter. It's a terrible book compared to The Mighty. Read The Mighty, not Irredeemable, please. Deadpool, it's very metafictional. The author has no clue where to go with Deadpool, so he writes an issue of Deadpool not knowing where to go. Meh, whatever. Hot Wire, closed up by Radical. Uh, very nice, fourth of four issues. Uh, even though it has Warren Ellis' name, kind of just because Warren Ellis was involved in Hot Wire a long time ago, it's still a very good book. Definitely check it out. Very fun stuff. Radical puts out, like I've said a million times, Radical puts out some great stuff. Barack the Barbarian, I'm sure that's going to sell a million copies. Uh, Ann Coulter's on the cover. And if you don't mind your ribs, you know, ah, 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 that's all the book is. It just keeps elbowing you in the ribs. Hey, you should be laughing right now. It's kind of funny because see, that guy looks like Conan O'Brien and that guy looks like David Letterman. Whatever, kind of, kind of yawn worthy. But this, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, Strange Tales by Marvel Comics is the best $5 you will spend this year on a comic. This, uh, okay, you know, I mean, they've pitched it as the, you know, the indie comic creators, you know, tackle Marvel Comics. Even when you get past that, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it, that's not what the point is. You have a Lockjaw story by Paul Pope, which is hilarious. Paul, Lockjaw and the Inhumans. And, and it's just absurd. 
but so good and fun. And then uh, you get the world where Spider Town, where Spider-Man and Mary Jane move to a town full of spiders and Spider-Man has trouble fitting in. Well, Mary Jane's fitting in just fine. This, quite possibly the best one, the Doctor Strange Nightmare Story, features the single best panel, uh, Doctor Strange eating alphabet soup that says, Nightmare did not poison this soup. And Doctor Strange thinks, well, that's a relief. And then all of a sudden, Herc tricked. And phew, off he goes to his adventure with Nightmare. That's hilarious. It's really well done. Uh, the James Kochalka Hulk's kind of funny. It, uh, it's okay. Then you just kind of get really bizarre things. You know, Johnny Ryan does a Punisher story about a kid who's having trouble. Uh, Cooperman, who does Tales Designed to Thrizzle, which we've reviewed before, does a, a Submariner story where he's so mad about humanity, except for he just can't get past the fact that it makes such delicious pizza. Like, <laughs> if that sounds like you want to read it, buy this book. Buy number two and three. It's a, it's a three-issue miniseries. Some of these are kind of anthology style. Uh, the, the, Mad the Modoc story is good. The Perry Bible Fellowship stuff is good. I can't even, I can't even go into like how many great things are in this book for $5. There's so much fun in here. It's well worth $5. Hell, I'd pay $8 for this book. It's really good. It's really the only book we need to talk about. Uh, sorry there wasn't anything else to really talk about this week. It's just a really boring week to work in a comic book store. So we'll see you next week, hopefully not a little later, because comics come out on Thursday. Don't forget that because of Labor Day here in the United States. At least they do in the United States. I don't know how you Canadians or uh, overseas or whoever else are going to, where you're going to get your comics or when. But uh, So we'll be back hopefully next Saturday, but we'll see depending on the time frame. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.